welcome to this session so today's topic of the discussion is the strain gauge and load cell which is another tram pieces so my name is ajit subhas surinshu working as an assistant professor in electronics and telecommunication department in the walton institute of technology salah So what is the outcome of this student session at the end of the session student will able to select the appropriate transducers so for the which is the uh, to measure the physical parameters so like a strain and load so what is before proceed further into this session of what is the basic knowledge you required so first of all you need a basic uh, electrical circuit analysis so to solve the electrical circuits and you should have a knowledge of the different materials and it's specially the electrical property not a physical property for example so the different types of the uh, materials uh, if you uh, divide it into the electrically it is the insulators metals semiconductors so at least you should have a basic knowledge of the electrical properties of it and it's uh, how the resistance changes with the change in the material so strain gauge so what is meant by the strain gauge so strain gauge is a type of the transducer which convert the strain into the equivalent electrical current or voltage so again the strain gauge is type of the uh, electrical type of the transducer so in the last session we discussed the div there are different types of the transducers electrical mechanicals and in the electrical mechanical so this is one of the type of the electrical transducer which converts the physical parameter into the electrical quantity so there are two types of the strain gauge so first is a wire type of the strain gauge and other is a coil type of the strain gauge now you can see this two diagrams which is the coil type of the strain gauge nowadays a wire type of the strain gauge is not used first of all the, its construction uh, construction cost and second is the second is the sensitivity so coil type of the strain gauge is a highly sensitive as compared to the wire type of the strain gauge so this uh, again you can see this are the made up of the metals and uh, which are the materials used commonly in this type of the strain gauge is the constant tension and different alloy with the constant tension so this property of the material allows it used in the strain gauge now this to end we can measure the change in the resistance so this is a coil type of the strain gauge now working principle so when strain gauge is under coil type of the strain gauge is under tension and under the compression so when it is under a tension at this to end you can see that uh, there is a change in the resistance and when it is under a compression you can see this uh, the resistance change at this to end so when you have a, a change in the length by a law of resistance so if you have studied in the type of the metals when the resistance of the material or resistance of the metal changes with the change in the length and change in the cross sectional area so when particular metal or material when it undergoes the physical changes it will change its resistance so in the first cases you under tension you will get the higher resistance and the second case you will get the lower resistance due to the compression because the resistance is directly proportional to the length and inversely proportional to the cross sectional area now gauge factor so what is meant by the gauge factor gauge factor is actually uh, used to measure the sensitivity of the strain gauge so in the uh, to measure the sens uh, sensitivity of, of the strain gauge it is a ratio of the change in the resistance divided by ch change in the length so if you take a ratio of the change in the length it is nothing but the strain and it is a ratio of the change in the resistance so what is the del l del l is the change in the length due to uh, compression or tension and l is the original length of the strain gauge again what is uh, del r del r is the change in the resistance due to the change in the uh, change in the length or change in the uh, change in the lateral length or change in the collateral length 
and this these are the ratios of the resistance and this gauge factor is without taking the temperature into the uh, without take, uh, taking the temperature into the account when you take a temperature into the account you have to take this alpha this so this alpha is a uh, actually it is dependent upon the material so which type of the metal or material you are using in this strain gauge now strain gauge measurement so how it can be measured so you when you connect the strain gauge in one arm arm of the uh, piston bridge you can measure the strain of that particular uh, strain of that particular uh, strain on that particular object so when you connect a uh, so strain gauge in one arm one arm of the uh, wheatstone bridge so what happens when the wheatstone uh, bridge is get unbalanced you will get the you will get the voltage at this two end so you can measure the current or you can observe the current at this two end with the help of the galvanometer or ammeter so Wheatstone bridge if you see the working principle of the Wheatstone bridge Wheatstone bridge is in the balanced condition when opposite resistance so this multiplication of this opposite resistance are equal so this is a balanced condition of the Wheatstone bridge and when this one of the resistances get changed due to change in the length or change in the due to the deformation in, uh, in the strain gauge so resistance changes this balanced condition is get changed and when this balanced condition get, uh, get changed you will get the current in the galvanometer or voltage at this two end so so which are the applications of the uh, strain gauge first is the component testing in the aircraft to uh, detect the uh, there is is there any structural damage of course it is used to measure the strain and it is also used to measure strain or strain generated by the different machinery in the industries so these are the application of the strain gauge load cells so what is meant the load cell load cell is one of the transducer which will converts the force or load on it into the equivalent electrical quantity now we come to the conclusion that load cell and the strain gauge both are the electrical type of the transducer so whatever is the physical parameter for uh, changing on it it will convert into the equivalent electrical quantity so which are the different types of the load cell for hydraulic is the one of the type of the load cells a pneumatic type of the load cell is and uh, last one is the strain gauge type of, uh, type of the load cell so there are th three types of the load cells are there so we are going to discuss the strain gauge type of the load cell so in the strain gauge type of the load cell we are using a strain gauge to measure the load now as you can see this construction of the load cells so this is your load cells and on the load cell there is a foil top of the strain gauge is connected so this is a foil top of the strain gauge is connected and at this end a load is applied so when load is applied what happens this strain gauge is under get compressed or uh, which is under tension so other end of this uh, load cell is fixed and other at the other end you are applying the load same here in this construction if you apply load on this top or on this if you place uh, on this uh, if you reverse it and if you apply the force on bottom side what happens the strain on this strain gauge is changes and you can measure the uh, particular uh, load or force so now this is a working principle of the load cell so one end is fixed other end we are applying the strain so what happens when you are applying the strain here so this part is under tension which is in an under compression so when you connect when you have a foil top of the strain gauge is placed at this two end so one type of the foil top of strain gauge is here and one more type of the foil type of the strain gauge is here so there are four type of four foil type of the strain gauge is placed at this four different places so when you apply a load here so this type of the foil type of strain gauge is under compression and this is under tension so again this is in the compression and this is in the tension again working principle same as that of uh, that of the uh, strain gauge that you have discussed 
So now this type of this strain gauge is connected to the one arm of the Wheatstone bridge to measure it into the equivalent electrical quantities. Now my question is to you is the can you measure a small weight uh, in the milligram with the load cell? If yes, can you give the examples of that? How you can enhance the sensitivity of the load cells? So I will give you a hint of the uh, one hint that is, if you connect more load cells here, more uh, strain gauge here, you can enhance the sensitivity of the load cell. Can you give another example that you can enhance the sensitivity of the load cell? Think about it, pause this video, and write the answer on the paper. Which are the applications? Of course, weight measurement is one of the application. Hopper scale is one of the application which is used in the industries. And these are the different weight measurement applications are there in the, uh, in the, air, in the airport to measure the weight. So these are the overhead uh, and again measure, to measure the weights of the agriculture products. So all these are the applications of the load cells. So these are the references.